Hey, Nick here. Today we're going to talk about Disney's Pixar's Luca. It was just released on the Disney Plus streaming service and it's only there. It's not in theaters, but we're going to talk about how it actually feels more like Miyazaki movie than the most recent 3D movie that came out of Studio Ghibli, Earwig and the Witch. <gasps> oh, what's wrong with you, stupid? <laughs> First of all, I just have to say this new Luca film the style of it and everything is awesome. It's so charming and we're going to dive deep into why it resembles a Miyazaki film. This is not going to be talking about the story. If you want story plots and more in-depth discussion video, we're going to be doing a breakdown on our podcast. So subscribe so you can get the most recent videos. Luca reminds me of Miyazaki's classics like Kiki's Delivery Service, Ponyo and Porcaroso. It's a very charming movie that takes place in a little island in Italy. The name of the city is called Porco Rosso. That's already giving hints of Miyazaki inspiration. So it's not meant to be a Miyazaki film, but it already feels like a Miyazaki movie. If you haven't seen Porco Rosso, I highly recommend watching it. I believe it's streaming on HBO Max and Netflix, depending on what country you're in. Or if you have a VPN, you can change your country and watch it. Luca is a lovely balance of magic and the mundane. It's a smaller story like My Neighbor Mr. Totoro, but with just enough magic to create a fun world to play in. The look of it is super appealing. You can freeze almost any frame and it will feel like an illustrated book. The stylized 3D rendering and the animation timing really helps give off that illustrated book feeling. This may sound like I hate the movie Earwig, it's just there's a lot of things... I didn't hate it, it's just there's a lot of things I just didn't like about it. And uh, it's just a lot of things just didn't work. You can look at the Rotten Tomato score, it's really low, but I don't like to even do that. It's just overall, it didn't feel like a Studio Ghibli movie. And I know not the same artist that worked on the 2D films worked on this movie. I believe it was like an outside company that they brought in to do the 3D. The director is Miyazaki's son, and I know he didn't get the support he needed from the studio and his father, and it's a big mess. But overall, Earwig just felt like a low-quality, straight-to-DVD movie. <laughs> I hate to say that, but just that wonderful, magical Miyazaki feeling just wasn't there in the movie. The story, even though it, it was about magic, just didn't feel magical at all. I think it hurt that they were just really in the house the whole time. They didn't go outside to get the, you know, classic landscapes you get in Miyazaki films. The beautiful flowers and meadows to the wonderful wide open skies and flying. It's just you were just inside this house. And it, I, I, maybe that was just what made it feel so contained as a story. I guess what hit me emotionally, there's this one scene. I use it a lot, but it's the first time Luca comes out of the water to breathe like air for the first time. And he looks around, he sees the beautiful landscape. And it's really cool because you get to see the world through like his eyes, the, the child's eyes. It's like experiencing something for the first time. It's a very strong Miyazaki theme. He uses that a lot, like viewing the world through, you know, children's eyes. And that scene alone was just like, wow. Like it, it hit me. It almost reminded me of the Ratatouille scene when um, he eats the Ratatouille food and gets sent back in time to remember his child. It was just one of those moments where it was like, whoa, like gosh. and. It's so interesting because there's no moments like that in um, Earwig and the Witch. I mean, Earwig and the Witch just felt actually the opposite, very soulless. And it maybe it had to do with like the idea of the gateway to the soul is through the eyes kind of thing. And um, maybe there was just the deadness in the eyes and the dilated pupils. And it felt like there was no life in earwig and any of the characters is just they felt so dead and just there like soulless puppets and you compare that to the eyes in luca i mean they there's so much color it's like a paintbrush 
of color going through there and it's so interesting too because there's even like a line the mom would always say look me in the eyes you know i love you and it's cool because there's like a payoff for that obviously later on this no 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 spoilers here but it, you can just see the difference just with the eyes alone i know the director was inspired by miyazaki's early animation here's a quick clip of him talking about it calling back to that I grew up with because it was in my my teenager year is future boy Conan Mirai Shonen Conan and it, it was early Miyazaki so this is Miyazaki's helming his first TV series and what's wonderful about that TV series is that it was actually working with the limitation of the time but it really holds up the story is beautiful and there were barefoot kids running around and there was definitely a lot that inspired our animators we watched it together we analyzed what can limited animation inspire us to do? So it was really about playing with timing. Earwig and the Witch's score was really weird. Ah, <laughs> At times you hear like a Pink Panther jazz copyright free song and then you get some very basic rock and roll music. And what didn't help was when there was no music, the silence just felt awkward. I don't know if it was just like sound design. It just... Everything just felt dulled down. It wasn't that Miyazaki ambient noise that we're used to. Where if you compare it to the beautiful soundtrack that Pixar did, it was just incredible how you got the classic Miyazaki sounds, just like light piano and sounds of the wind and the trees and nature. They just captured it so perfectly when you hear the waves and stuff. And I mean, obviously, I think it also has to do going back to Earwig was just in the house the whole time and you just didn't get good sound effects. When it comes to character design, I feel like Earwig and the Witch totally failed. And it's not the character design that failed. I just think the characters didn't go with the background. The background, you get this like really detailed, high rendered. I mean, there wasn't even a blur or a depth of field at all. It was just like a camera straight out of Maya. and. So you get this high quality background, but then the characters just didn't have as much detail and it just fell off. Like the characters did not blend in well with the background at all. I kind of get what they were going for with the stylized design. It just fell short of the Studio Ghibli standards, which we know and love. On the other hand, Luca knocked it out of the park with the fun cartoony designs. And then the riggers did such a good job so the animators could express and pose the characters in certain ways where it just felt like there was so much life breathed into all the characters you can also see the difference in color tones so earwig and the witch is very cold it, it's a lot of blue tones and it just doesn't feel inviting at all but on the other hand luca it's like their colors coming from the sun it's very warm a lot of warm colors even at night when they're looking at the stars you see a lot of warm colors on their face their cheeks are red and it's, you can just it's just so inviting compared to earwig and the witch i don't know what happened with earwig and the witch on the back end but it just didn't hit the marks of a good movie awesome job pixar team the animators, the modelers, the riggers, the compositors, the sound design, the editors. Great job. It looks incredible. I am so happy it had that Pixar short feel to it. I can't wait for Pixar to experiment more with their shorts, with the designs. Like they had one that looked like it was like outlined by pencils and they do such creative, fun stuff in their shorts. I would love to see that in their feature films. It was a breath of fresh air, whimsical and fun, yet very minimal when it comes to the overall scope of the story. Obviously, Luke is not the best Pixar film of all time. It's probably not even going to go down as one of the greatest, but it's a fantastic movie when it comes to visuals and animation. The more I think about your wig and the witch, I just can't help but get the blue opening image with Totoro at the beginning of all of the Studio Ghibli films. 
and it's it's so funny because like once you see that automatically you just have a higher expectation for the film and maybe that's why i'm being so harsh with earwig maybe it's just if it was a different studio or whatever i would have cared less but because it's studio ghibli i was just so bummed when i saw the final product i feel like luca got a lot closer when it comes to the miyazaki style I believe they capture the magic in the 3D world better than Earwig and The Witch. I think though, hopefully Studio Ghibli can learn from this and they can maybe reach out to creative artists that can help them reach the style that they want to attain. If you guys enjoyed this, please give it a thumbs up. By the way, we do tons of different reviews from VFX breakdowns to in-depth movie studies two deep fakes um we have a lot of fun here we're also pretty active on tiktok and we make a lot of shorts we have a lot of fun comparing 3d to 2d live action to animation it's so much fun just to compare them and laugh and see the differences i would love to know if you agreed with me if you thought maybe earwig was better than i made it out to be or if you think luca isn't a miyazaki inspired film at all please let me know down below i am totally open for discussions I just finished watching the movie and I felt like making this video. I hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you on the next As Art.